Okay, we're now recording. Welcome everyone to Blockchain Art for our Monday, October 7th session. So uh, I put together an agenda for today uh, kind of based on the, the comments in the uh, in Discord. So let me go ahead and share my screen here. So Eric had made a comment that he wanted to look at the ISCC and the capabilities. So we could start off uh, with that. <coughs> Let me see if I have um, that link. I know it's in some of our previous. Here, I think it's, Let's see if I can find the link here. Um, yeah. Well, so I was really, is. I was really encouraged um, by um, ISCC because it could theoretically enable us to create um, trackable sub hashes. So if you have a complex grouping of files, let's say a website that's an art project, you can basically hash components of it, and then if anything is remixed or reused it, because of it's, it's on an open a Creative Commons license, basically that can be tracked this way. Um, but I feel like there's a lot of other capabilities that I may not be understanding, um, but I also don't understand a lot about hashing. Um, and so um, I thought like, okay, uh, Steve, can I just share my screen briefly? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I just, we, we were just, we were just in the dig life meeting and we were just talking about this and I want to just share, uh, I, I'm, I'm developing a presentation that I have to give later this week. And so I, I, I never like actually tried drawing this out before, but um, I'm gonna make maybe a nicer version of this, uh, not in slideshow <laughs> um, at some point. But basically the word, we're talking a lot about um, the capabilities of smart contracts and issuing currencies and using rolling to sort of uh, create complex ownership schemes use in key base. And I think that's really cool, and I want to keep pursuing that channel. But I also um, want to bring our attention slightly back to just the core of what is the distributed art object, um, because I think before we can really get to a functional place with the smart contract and like really playing with the capabilities of that and like arguing about what's the ownership scheme, is it a circular economy or is it a speculation economy or like what are we doing there? Um, the fundamental baseline for establishing an art object is here. Um, and so we need to deal with the hashing first in order to sort of identify that a file of some type has uniqueness, right? And we need to use the DID uh, JSON file um, um, in order to create uh, hooks, right? So it can be seen by whatever search engine or whatever algorithm is gonna be searching for this thing, right? Whatever protocol is being used. And then we need to get this onto a distributed storage server. Um, after we've done that, then the next step is creating a certificate of authenticity, right? Which outlines the nature of what the work is, uh, how it can be uh, up, uh, upgraded over time. Like all, all the parameters are located in the certificate of authenticity, including provenance. And then we get to the smart contract, which starts mediating terms of sale, right? And on the basic level, the thing that I want to see happen here, and I'm going to push for, is 15% resale royalty. Which doesn't seem like a big deal, but it actually is, because relative to the art world, and then relative to the crypto NFT scene, people have kind of let go of this idea. And so I want to make sure that this is included in the sort of whatever initial prototype we have for, let's say, a video artwork, right? Because if we can establish that, we've then created a tool that I could then give to other artists to use to start editioning their work. And all of a sudden we start getting traction, which I think um, Ned, from our chain's perspective, will maybe drive adoption, you know? Um, but the only thing that I want to see happening on roll on our chain right now is the smart contract. And maybe the certificate of authenticity on, redund on a redundant level. 
but I want to see these things also happening on the Ethereum blockchain as well. Um, but right now we can use rolling to do both of these two things. So I'm going to put these in red. For our chain. Mm -hmm. um, but I think in order for this to really work, it needs to have some type of cross chain compatibility, right? Sure. Gary, you feel me? Yeah, I, I'm liking this this approach. I like the way you you're breaking it down into uh, into uh, locations uh, and um, uh, I yeah I, I like the feel of the smart contract existing uh, between the art of the, the certificate of authenticity. Uh, yeah, I like it up to there. Now, now I need to kind of grok where we go, where we go from there. Well, yeah, we don't have to worry about there at that point because once we get to the smart contract, then we can return to the discussion that we're having right now, which is all about ownership, all about distribution of fees, right? How much does it cost to, uh, you know, do these things? These are these are questions that we can answer later. Jim is talking about a ticketing system. Again, that's a discussion that we can have once we get to the smart contract phase, mm -hmm. because um, we don't really know what the viewing mechanism is going to be yet. And so maybe for our prototype, we can pick something, but starting there is putting the cart before the horse. We need to have a thing first. And that thing, I think, can be a picture or a video, but we should just start there and create some tool that artists can use where they can upload a video, right? It's attached to a wallet. So, so someone's, someone's dropping things in the middle. I'm, 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 I, I'm, my studio is next to a metalworking shop. And so I hear people clanking. <laughs> oh no, um, that was the cable car outside my window. That was the cable car? Oh. <laughs> Make me both. Um, so, yeah, and because I want to bring back just like the primary interest that I have is protecting the bunnies, right? Um, and I want to make sure that we're clear that the, we have to protect the bunnies. Um, um, and so in order to protect the bunnies, we have to create a magic force field, right? Mm -hmm. And the magic force field tells all the wolves to fuck off. Can we and go back to the, the previous screen? Yeah, this is the Michael, magic force field. If, Michael, if you're talking, you're on mute. Yeah, you, you've got to feed the wolves. Don't the forget. Wolves, to, wolves can go fuck themselves until we're ready. Oh, to feed no, they can't. We're, no, we're, like, we're, we're entirely certain. It's it's an interesting thesis, but beware <laughs> of the wolf. The wolves, yeah, that's the thing. We're going to open up a magic portal, a gateway, yeah. to interface with the wolves where we don't have to feed them any of the bunnies. The bunnies are sick and tired of being eaten by the motherfucking yeah. wolves. So <laughs> yeah, fuck the wolves and the fucking know. horse that they fucking rode in on, and we're going to go tell those wolves, hey, listen, wolf, I'll give you some shit when we're ready to give you some shit. But for right now, we're protecting the bunnies because that's what this is. We're all about protecting the bunnies here. Oh, I love it when you speak revolutionary. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's just wonderful. Um, <laughs> and, but I think, I think, yeah, we're getting this down nicely. Um, I have a question. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Eric, you mentioned... 50, all you want, all you're worried about is 50% of resale royalties. Right now, yes, as a prototype, because that's um, comparable to how they do it in Europe. With uh, it's called Drot de Suite, uh, D R O I T D E S U I T E, Drot de Suite, right? It's it's established in European law. However, it's not as enforceable, right? Um, Rauschenberg famously brought this case, I think, in the 60s to try and get resale royalties because he was poor and yet his work was selling for millions of dollars in the secondary market. Um, you know, and that's a like kind of part of the problem here is like artists create things that have immense amounts okay. of value. Okay, my question is, we don't care what they resell it for as long as we get 50% of it? Right now, yes because that's the way the market currently works. 
we eventually want to create a new type of market, but I think we need to go back to this, which is the baseline structure, which gets people thinking about community, like, uh, uh, how do I say, um, cooperation. We all choose, if I call up 25 influential artists that I know, right, in New York, and I, in LA, and I say, look guys, I've got this new system. You should all start additioning all of your video art through this system, and then when you show it in the gallery, in order for a collector to buy your work, they have to buy it through this system. They will do it. I, I have. It's like four years ago they wouldn't listen to me, but now they will. Like I can make this thing happen, but we need to give them a slick interface that just does all this stuff for you, right? And then they'll start using it, right? And that, and that we can, because the thing is, here's the mistake that people make. And my ex, my collaborator Benton makes the same mistake. He thinks that by doing this, you're going to give the work value. This is not what gives the work value. The gallery is what gives the work value. The writers who write about the work give your work value. The curators at the museums who curate you into into museum shows and historicize your work gives the work value. Me teaching about my students about your art in my class gives your work value because it becomes part of the historical canon, right? Those are the things that create value in the art world. All this technology, is its pure function is to service that, you know what I mean? And so therefore we have to sort of like, I, 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 we, we need to sort of reorient ourselves towards the needs of actual artists before we go and design the systems. And I'm saying like this is a, a preliminary step that no one has somehow been able to figure out how to do coherently to make a free tool that artists can use to addition their artworks and protect themselves. Like if we could just do this, then mm -hmm. we can start designing new economies, which is what I really do want to do. But like, we can't just get this step done. And until we just get this step done, none of that other stuff can happen because it's not art. You know what I mean? Right. Eric, I've got a question. When you were, you were just talking about earlier how uh, an artist uploads a file and the file gets tashed and then it's saved out into uh, either IPFS or uh, Keybase. So are you envisioning a, a website, uh, a, a, low, a, web, a web address or website that an artist will go to and it's got a user interface where they can, you know, click, it, um, a screen opens up and they can go search for that file that they want to upload. They, they select that and then it, it goes through its motions of uploading and hashing. Is, is that what you're envisioning? I would love for that to happen, yes, where it's a simple user interface. Um, but importantly, like the, the difference between what I want to do and everyone else wants to do is I don't want to take a cut of that money when the, when the art gets transferred. Like we, we don't get a cut of that. This needs to be an open distributed system that uses protocol level technologies that anyone can access. So we're, we're not starting a company here that does this, right? Mm -hmm. We're using these pre-existing technologies and tying them together in a way and then handing it over to artists and saying, look, here, here's this tool for doing this, right? Mm -hmm. Now, later on, there may be ways, there's going to be a million different ways of monetizing this. I'm not worried about that. I'm ultimately not the person that's going to figure out how to do that because the, the, ultimately what matters here is whether you're an art world insider or not. And none of us, myself included, are art world insiders. I mean, I've got, you know, I'm, you know, I'm in an art institution here where I am right now. I'm getting a master's degree in this. That's like the pedigree. So basically after this, anything that I say is art is art, right? Because I've studied this. I have this, this useless degree, <laughs> um, you know, um, but I'm still not an art world insider. And ultimately that's where the gravy gets made. Right. And no one, none of us, no one in the crypto scene is going to be able to hack that. It's not a system that you can hack. It's mm -hmm. a soft, you have to be present, you know, in New York, you have to be rich. You have to be like, there's like all these other factors in place that need to happen for that to really work. That said, that doesn't mean we can't create tools to empower the artists who are just fucked left, right and center by these power players. Right. And these, these, these other systems. And this is the preliminary step towards creating that system. So like, yes, an interface, you upload the file, okay. you 
have a smart contract, a certificate of authenticity, you upload what year was it created, what's the medium, instructions, you know, like and the other thing, you know, like all this stuff, and maybe it needs to be editable, maybe like you, it, it, I, I don't know, like this would be a question for Ned, is whether or not after we upload a certificate of authenticity of whether or not the certificate is editable, like, because like, I, I know in Ethereum they're doing that side chaining thing using Open Zeppelin that lets you be able to sort of retroactively uh, uh, correct fuck ups in smart contracts. Well, that should never, uh, that should be totally immutable. It should never be changed. What's this on the chain? Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, like, there needs to be a mechanism for like corrective stuff. So if something's wrong, it can uh. be corrected. I think that would have to be new additions, wouldn't it? Yeah, I mean, that. well, it, it could be a couple of different things, but that's a great uh, point that hasn't really been addressed by blockchains. But, uh, you know, the way Greg architected our chain was that you can make edits to data that exists on the blockchain. Really? Yeah. Wow. Uh, because here's the thing. So like, basically we do, we, it's like almost like thinking about it, like uh, a macro structure, right? Like um, we're here, let me make a new uh, a thing. So we've got like the, uh, the work, which is the circle, right? But then underneath it, we, we need to basically have addition one, addition two, And every time we create a new edition, how do you do it? Or you cross it out? Is there a thing to cross it out? Well, oh, uh, strike through. Yeah. <clears throat> These things need to be basically the token needs to refer only to the most recent edition, right? So you want a version history. Yeah, like 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 GitHub or something, where it's like where these things are mutable. They exist in the blockchain. The old files exist in the blockchain, but mm -hmm. the certificate of authenticity, the smart contract, and the token are all pointed at the new, the most recent version of the file. Case in point, I upload a standard definition video to our chain, right, or to distribute it to to uh, IPFS, and then ten years later, it gets up res to HD, right. Mm -hmm. The HD video is the file now, right? And so we need a way of pointing to that new one and saying, okay, this old, or maybe the old edition and the new edition live in this, this circle, you know? Well, they're forks. You gotta allow for forking. Forks. Yeah. And one percent off to the fork as well. I mean, I think you would, the smart contract would handle that. It would keep, I mean, you know, we do this in yeah. computer science all the time. Yeah. We do, you know, change logs and history. And, yeah. You know. But we just need to call it something like uh, slicker. <laughs> like <laughs> more, more arty. Um, forking art? Forking yeah, or it's, it, it, we can't call it forking, it's re editioning, right? Reeditioning, yeah, that it, sounds good. It, it, to me, it's more like evolving art. Your the current edition includes all old editions. Yeah. Well, but should it? And should the blockchain hold the old editions forever? Well, you know, I I think that should when be. When we get to Venus and we implement uh, rent, you know, you may choose at some point to no longer pay to store. <laughs> Yeah, the smart contract may be smart enough, right, to know that, okay, three versions ago, we don't want to pay for the blockchain to keep storing that. It, it depends what the revision was. Is the revision because, you know, you just had to update some color you used that was wrong or it's really well, a new Well, well think, think if my art object is a piece of software code and... The, I want to charge for the use of that software code uh, one lumen. And say I update that software code to version two, which does something better and 
but but it's still the same art object, and for the and I, I will still do something for one lumen, but the the user would no longer have access to earlier versions of that art object. Yeah, I think that's something that will be individually spec uh, um, specified by the artist at the time that they addition the work through the gallery. You see what I'm saying? Because everyone, everyone's going to have a different take of what the work actually is. So all we can do is create options for people to choose whether or not the old editions need to stay uh, uploaded or whether they can be deleted. You know what I mean? I don't know. Is it possible to delete things once it's on IPFS? I don't think it is. I, IPFS, I don't know, but our chain will allow that at some point. But it's going to be astro. But you said it's going to be astronomically expensive. I mean, and like, unless Ned, can you help us create a shard? I mean, I'd be happy to use an R chain shard if we can use a private R chain shard that doesn't and just have the contract on the main shard. Like, because then then it would make sense for artists and art institutions. But if it's going to be charged rent, it doesn't make sense for us to have that on. Well, there, no, you know? the whole point of rent is that once you no longer want it you don't have to pay for it. It'll make your initial storage so much cheaper. How cheap? What are you talking about? How much per gig? Oh, I, I don't know. But but think about it. It, it would be it would be prohibitive, uh, prohibitively expensive today to store any kind of big file on Ethereum. No, you don't put the file on the blockchain. No one's talking about putting files on blockchains. That's crazy. We're talking about using the IPFS, you know, which is Okay. Designed, designed for that, you know. Right. So, but you're going to put the hash on the blockchain. Yeah, we're going to put the hash in the smart contract and the certificate of authenticity. Right. It's text. It's a few kilobytes at most. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Okay. So it costs money to store. Right. So the yeah, smart so contract. Back, right. We should just step back a few minutes because I was thinking you actually want to store the art object on the blockchain, and you don't. Okay. Right. No, because it's, it, it doesn't make any Fun sense that. unless unless there's a solution that you are offering for us to Love create that. our own shard that doesn't require us to be paying rent. You know, like we, we create a collector's club. That's the, shard, the, the shard's not going to relieve you of that burden. Well, the shard will, if you are in control of the shard, you set the, the pricing structure and the rules and regulations for that shard. So in a sense, say this is the art uh, on the blockchain council, and we've created art on the blockchain shard. The council sets the rules, guidelines, and pricing structure for that shard. So it, it, so you know, ultimately it is what we create it to be, but you know, you have to at least cover your costs, hardware and network costs to the entities that are providing the, you those services. And, and even if it's your own shard, and I don't know if you have been figured out yet, but you're still going to have to pay fees to the parent shard. Like a tax for why? Well, you have to pay some kind of, I think some kind of transaction uh, I, I don't know. You know, that whole sharding thing isn't totally, it's not ready yet. I mean, in a way, yeah. it almost, is, it kind of sounds like the blockchain is a Ponzi scheme where it's like we get everyone on this <laughs> platform and then we have to pay you forever to use it. It's like no, an it's interesting really model. Well, so, so just remember in, in everything but our chain, you pay up front. So it's not really. It's it, gas. It, Right, you pay the gas up front. We're not they're not really going out and collecting monthly dues and then borrowing from Peter to pay Paul. So it's not I, I hear what you're saying, but it's not really like that. It's just and, and again, we're not storing the art, we're only storing the hash. And uh, you know, through some kind of oracle, you know, uh the only a cost associated with storing a hash on there would be reading and writing it. Is that not correct? It, it, well, your smart contract, right? When you do, when you deploy your smart contract and then you call that smart contract, you're going to have to pay the gas. We call it flow, but you're going to have to pay the gas to deploy that smart contract and it'll figure out the cost based on the size of the data. 
and the computation needed. And but because you're only storing a hash, it's going to be really cheap. Yeah, and that's the thing. And that's I think so. I think this is. I think it's it's fine. Like whatever. Yeah, if they I, if they charge us gas, like it's if it's gas to construct the to, to conduct the transaction, that's fine. We understand right. that. But Just think of it like of, a ledger, and you're storing the hash on the ledger now. The system that's actually storing the art, that's a whole different economic model, and that's you're gonna to have to work on that. But file, that's file, ch thing. file coin. I mean, they pay you basically to for proof of storage, right? So you offer up some of your storage. I I don't know. Yeah. And that gives you. Uh, um, files coins that you can then use to store your own. Uh, files on the thing guys give me one second i've been on i've been on the phone for the last like two hours give me one second i'll be right back all right yep. yeah yeah I, I got a meeting coming up soon but no all right yeah. oh boy well it's art in the making you know it's yes, sort indeed. of uh, it's self-referential but that's usually how we find out how it works. I mean, it's it's very common issue. Um, bunnies versus wolves. You know, it, it's it's not just the um, the artist with um, um, you know print or uh, sculpture or uh, paint or whatever. Obviously, musicians, software writers, um, all sorts of creative entities in the economy are eaten by the wolves. So the pattern that's relevant to this um, particular project uh, manifestation, the pattern is very general. So. You know, in a way, if, if this art object of designing um, a protocol a stack to manage this and make it available works for an art object with a 15% um, levy on it, which is really what this is about. It's about you know, perpetuating a levy on the transfers associated with a project or, or some intellectual property. Well, that's a very big target. There's all sorts of room to play with that. Yeah, this is this has been a good discussion. I, I'm seeing it sort of resolving into both a transaction A transaction respects the history that made it possible. I'm seeing it in, in terms of two things differently. I'm seeing the sale of it and the royalty of it as, as somehow two different things. And I don't think that should be necessary. Well, they are two different things. I think um, unless every con contributor is a co-owner in some uh, accountable sense and every transaction on that art object um, carries a consequence for every existing co-owner. You talking about what Gary is setting up on Keybase? Well, we're talking about basically the, the the sort of nature of the smart contract. Mm -hmm. Like, what does it do? How does it respect origin origination? This is what you're looking for. You're looking for respecting origination and contribution in what happens to the art object in the future. 
don't forget the friggin' artist, for instance. That's basically what the statement is. So yeah. So how does it tr- how does it track? Yeah. That how is, how is the future entrained by the past? Well, that's the entire structure of the blockchain itself, right? It's like what well, the, blo- and, the blockchain and, does. And many accounting systems. That's not unique to the blockchain. It's a process that can do that, but you could do it with a bunch of other methodologies. Well, um, it's 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 all of these things combined. Yeah. But it's also there's like the U.S. legal precedent, right? So, <laughs> the, like like we, we, these things don't function. This does not function without a functioning legal system. If it doesn't play in Texas, it's not going to go, is it? Yeah, basically. So, yeah. like, I mean, it, it, the technology in and of itself isn't enough. No, no, it, it is all legal. This is all at, at fundamental. Is it's all about the structure of the contract to embed with the certificate of authenticity to make it happen. And that's yeah, that's the, not technical. That's legal. All right. So, what the smart contract does. So, th- this is um, where art differs from other forms of asset, right? Because the certificate of authenticity, we're defining what the work is, right? And then we're saying in the certificate of authenticity, you must sell me only via the smart contract. Otherwise, this work is invalid. It is yeah. not a valid artwork. And so it's a condition. And so therefore, the smart contract, which is pointing at that certificate of authenticity, which is the thing that we're actually selling, and says, okay, if you if you want this thing, you have to go through me. Yeah. There's no, the, and there's no way around it because it's embedded into this primary structure of what the work is in the certificate of authenticity, which yeah. is then pointing at the file, which has been rendered original look, via hashing. Look at, look at uh, you know, uh, I, I love your structure. Oh, well, leave it back up there, Eric. Oh, I, sorry. I, Yes, I, this, I, is, I this isn't this is this isn't the whole thing. This is just I just did this like late last night, just as a go. Uh, I mean, I guess but, this but, is. This but, is but what I want to say is, we already can do. You say all you want is the ability to run a smart contract that gives fifteen percent royalty to the original owner. Yes. We already we already can do that. I know, so let's just do it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's, I that's a, that, I, I, I've been doing that. So let's just do that. Let's do that and then create a tool that we can then give to people that just does that. And but, that's it. But, you, but, but when, I, when I try to do that, you think that that is starting the – the starting the monetization too early, but but what I'm wanting to show is we we have we have the smart the smart contract part of it down. All the other stuff is is a is a manual operation, putting up a prototype DID. I mean we'll we'll have a we'll have a template to pull from dropping your art file in the proper directory, running the hash file program, uh, uh, uploading that to the proper distributed storage directory. Uh, We we pull a template for the certificate of authenticity and we run the program that says that somebody sends me uh, a dollar to a contract in the AOTB channel, I send 15 cents to AOTB and Gary Coulter, I'm sorry, Gary Coulter gets 15% and the owner of the, the robot, which is AOTB, gets the the other 85 cents so so Mm. we have the model of um 
we have the model of uh, distribution down. Distribution, yeah. Yeah, no, and I totally get, I totally get that, and like I, I, I understand it. And so what I'm saying is, okay, let's just stop there for a second, and can we just tie these other pieces into that, and just get it working, so then we can addition some video artworks and get some other artists. Like I'll bring some other people in, have them addition some artworks, and just do that right before we get ahead of ourselves and do all this other stuff. Is that like? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to see you to feel like I'm disqualifying what you're doing because I, I, under, I, it's like you're, you're like, you're 20 million, you're like 25 steps ahead. I think of where my brain is. I think that's what, what's actually happening is you're just, you're taking this, you're 25 cent, like, steps ahead of where I am conceptually. Um, and so I'm saying like, okay, I think there's like, that's where we want to go, but can we just back up and get these other pieces sort of in the yeah, block? I and I don't see it as being ahead or behind. I see it as we all have different views of how, what this thing is going to be and how it's going to work. And, and I'm telling, you know, I, I can tell you where my view maps onto this, this diagram up here that I, that I say makes a lot of sense and we can replace the ERC 721 in there for now with just Lumen. Can you encode information into lumens? Is there an NFT style thing in with the? Uh, I actually don't know anything about lumens. I should look that up. Well, I'm saying let's let's use our let's use human lumen for our token for now. Is it possible to make a a lumen individuated, like non fungible? Although we could use something else like then it's like, but like there has to be some kind of. Key. Oh, 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 okay. Okay. Uh, that, this is what I was saying. I need to rock that ERC 721. Never mind. Never mind. I know what you're talking about now. That that's work that I'm not interested in doing. That'll have to be a gym or someone, but yeah, I, I know what you're talking about there. But you, you could, me? you could easily track every transaction on an open money base, uh, just to give yourself the, um, the audit trail. And that audit trail, of course, can be used to display and deploy and do all things. But like, yeah, uh, I, that, that's why I say we ought to, I mean, since we can do that anyway, why not go ahead and, dis, and, and issue community tokens? Declare a currency for the project and require that any transactions regarding the transfer of the certificate of, or, or around the certificate of authority, i.e. ownership or utilization or whatever, just by um, any transactions go through that currency. So you're saying like we, we addition one video and then we issue a community currency for that video. You, declare, a, you declare a community currency for that video. And then yeah, currency is first of all uh, quantified by uh, the contributions, the total contributions that go in. So it starts off with about say 20 contributors, the gallery, the providers of this, that, and the other, the five artists, the, whatever. You know. So you have a, a roster of contributors, their net contribution as mutually and self-assessed is the opening of the asset in the projects self-evaluation so it has if if there was a recognized contribution say two hundred thousand dollars at current values as mutually assessed within that group then you have 20 players with parts of two hundred thousand uh, dollar um, negatives that's what they have contributed and there is an asset putative of two hundred thousand dollars in the in the project itself. Now, if somebody wants to become part of the project, i.e. a consumer of the art, then they do it through um, contributing to it. They might contribute money. Mm. And whatever they contribute anyway is uh, subject to a 15% redistribution across the existing ownership. So if a collector buys the tokens that we've issued, uh, if they buy into the community of contributors, they're not getting anything out. This is like Hotel California, mate. You can 
check out any time you like, but you can never leave. You, you get into this, you become a member of the contributing community because a, a dealer, a critic, is a member of the contributing community at some level. That's <laughs> interesting. So, uh, so I just want to say, if you have your own shard, you could write all these rules because you, yeah. you as the owner of your shard and in, in our chain, uh, create your own economic system. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, now, you may have is, to pay a small transaction fee to the parent shard. Yep. Yeah. Uh, uh, but your shard is because we were so we were thinking like in, in music, and I'm just throwing this out there. You know, we didn't have commitments from anybody, but you know, Beyonce, Jay Z, they could have their own shard, you know, and they set the economics of that shard. They set yeah. the rules and the regulations of who could come in, you know, blah, blah, blah. Wait, so, so if, we, if we can create a video art shard, that would make a lot of people very happy that I know. Um, like if we could create a shard that's very specifically oriented towards posting video artworks, right? Um, and then we create kind of these modular community schemas that can be applied to those video artworks. There would be a lot of really happy people if we could just give them that, you know? Yeah, you just have to hire the rolling programmers to write our contracts. So they'll be happy too. But like mm -hmm. um, the terms of the shard, and then all the video art is stored on the shard. No, it could still be stored off chain. It could remember, still be stored in IPFS. Because we're storing the hash. So you, you could store it anywhere. It doesn't matter because the, remember, remember the blockchain is like a big ledger and it's, and it's uh, governing the rules and regulations of storing things on the ledger. In this case, it's the hash. And then another smart, and then another smart contract and some probably some external code is uh, uh, governing the intersection between the hash and then the actual artwork itself. But it'll all be handled in code. And um, the the shard that we would create our art shard, um, where is that hosted? Like, do we we um, is it possible to, for me to download a client to my desktop computer? It probably wouldn't have the horsepower needed, but you know you 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 know you could spin up something in the cloud, some servers in the cloud. I mean, it doesn't have to be super expensive. Like, can we addition? Um, like Raspberry Pis with like with like 128 gigabyte like thumb drives attached to them, that like we that we give them to people that are participating in the art shard. Could that run our chain like this? Art to run it on a shard on a Pi, I, I mean yeah, we had uh, we had a developer do that as a proof of concept. It would be super performant. I mean there'd be it doesn't have better. to be if there's. No, but there's better, but there's better really cheap ways to do it. Maybe you get the free Amazon Google Cloud server, and maybe that's enough. Would be enough to do it in our package. Um, I mean, I like, I like where this discussion is going. Um, so just so I understand, so when the collectors contribute, so like we, I create a video piece, right, that I want to addition through this system. So if I'm understanding, I then create a community currency for that, and then all the people that are participating in the exhibition of that work gain some form of share of that work, which is an IOU, basically saying, like, we are all yeah, but just this. Who's I? Who's I? You can't IOU without saying who I is. And that's, so that's the, 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 the art as an individuated entity. Goes. It's a community. There isn't, the art is a community of contributors. That's the, you've got to start from there. And so it's, the, it's, so it's the entire ecosystem that it's is an, used. It's a, yeah, it's, it's a whole, it's a whole package and it's going to get big and hairy. Well, it's going to be tokenized, right? So, so when you're shard, you're going to mint X number of coins. So say in your art shard, you're going to mint, uh, mm -hmm. You know, your art shard is specific for this one piece of art, and you're going to mint, you know, a thousand tokens, and then your governance will determine how those thousand tokens get distributed, and that's like people owning, you know, that percentage of the artwork through their cryptocurrency. But is that what you're saying, Michael? 
Um, in a relationship map, not in a token. Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking of uh, implementation, but yeah, you're right in terms of conceptually. Guys, I got to jump off to another meeting. Thanks for but, hanging out, Ned. But once again, this has really been, uh, you know, interesting. Yeah, thanks for coming and hanging out. All right. Thank you. See you, Great meeting. See you Thank Ned. Um, so, all right, so we're not issuing currency, but we're creating a distributed ledger that everyone says what they think they're owed by the art as community object. And so basically what I like about what you're saying then is like you're extending the art object, not just itself, but to the entire ecosystem that is used to formalize its value. So you're, we're extending it into the galleries and into the museums and into the critics and into the people that helped create it. And like, it's like all, everyone involved in the ecosystem that is. It's part of the commonwealth. It, it is a commonwealth. That's genius. That actually solves the problem then of how do we define value in the art object? Because it's not just additioning it through a blockchain system. It's recognizing all the other sort of flow, value flows into it. That is what yeah. creates the, you know, the, 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 write, the write up in art, on, on ArtNet you know, the blog, it's like the, um, the, the exhibition ca catalog that I was created for that show I had in New York. And then, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the residency program that I was at when I created the artwork, you know? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. I got to, got to, um, acknowledge source. And of course the, the, the commercialization of art, has always sought to profit from source, but totally deny it. It never owns the artist. No. I've got a question. So now we're we're defining what the commonwealth or the community is. Uh, is it more of a bookkeeping task of making sure as the community grows and those? It's all bookkeeping. It's all bookkeeping. Okay, so somebody has to make those entries. Uh, for each additional entity that comes into the Commonwealth. Yeah, a transaction is recorded. It's a wallet transfer in that currency. Okay, so that's... So, Michael, is, 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 is when, if, when I create the video, who ever, like, and I, I, I decide to include you four, and then my gallerist, and let's say like five other people. So let's say there's 10 people that I'm including, that I as the artist am including in my art community to for like for the, for the how this work exists. Do we, and we all say like, let's say for the sake of argument, we all say we put, we, we spent a thousand dollars of time or material value, right? So now there's a $10,000 IOU for the artwork as community, right? But let's say a, an 11th person comes in later and says, I want to claim some of the value of that artwork. How does that work? We can't just, can we just arbitrarily create another thousand dollars or a community money for that? Well, the, the, the $10,000 would, would be represented by tokens. <sighs> um, I, I think not. I think frankly that the tokens are a problem because they, they, they give, um, a restricted sense of reality. So what? 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 So what? 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 what if it's just a ledger? If it's just a ledger, I forget the word tokens. What? What is it? And it's we, it's moving we, balances. It's we, it's pluses and minuses on it's, a on it's, a. It's on a entry set. on the balance sheet. Can we create yeah. more of it though? It creates itself. You can't have a positive entry without a negative. But if so, someone's, if someone, if you, if, 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 if an eleventh person, if we, we have a ten thousand dollar IOU right on our balance sheet, and then someone else comes in and says, "I want a thousand dollars," then we're just adding a thousand dollars, and that's it. Um, depends where they get it from. I, I would say that they buy a thousand of the dollars that are vested in the positive asset of the project, so they become a counterparty in that set of books. And by doing so, they just become just another entry. So they come in mm -hmm. with a positive valuation. There's 10,000 in here, they want to buy a thousand of it. So the asset goes down to nine, the um, 
individual goes up a thou. Right. So we each and, get a so we each get a hundred. So we each get a hundred dollars. And that, well, the, you get what you get when you were a contributor, and it was all mutually assessed and shuffled mm -hmm. into shape. I mean, let's face it: the, the 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 accumulation of who contributes and how it is is phase one. Mm -hmm. Then, when people are sort of buying in, they become contributors of a sort. But there's also a redistribution because every transaction in the set carries a 15% levy back to the common of the group. That way, everybody who's involved is getting 15% of everything that happens with that on proportion to their own contribution in the process. So if I'm understanding, no matter what, we all get 15%. So if, if, if Steve, if, if we have an 11th person comes in, pays us a thousand dollars of American currency for a thousand dollars of ownership of the work, the work now owes $9,000. We each redistribute 15%. No. He pay, he pay, and maybe it's sort of like he gains 850, 150, goes into uh, distribution across the other accounts. I mean, you know, the, it, I, don't, I don't think I get it completely. So that $1,000, so, okay, so you have $1,000. Um, 15% of that is that $150, and that gets distributed to everybody in the group. And that 850 goes into the project. Oh, and then what happens to it? So that 11th person now becomes a member of the Commonwealth. So when the, when the next person comes along in the, the, next, the following year and wants to contribute $1,000, now there's 11 people that get 15%. So it, it was you know, it was $150, that was 165 and that uh, 840 would go into the pot. So uh, every time someone gets added in, there's, you know, everything is kind of rejiggered a little bit. Yeah. And then what happens when the work is at a positive value? Well, you're going to see some, there's, uh, there's this distinction you see between buying into it where you're joining a community of considerable self-assessment. And yeah, there's, uh, what are you betting? How much money are you putting in to be part of our club, uh, of our art? But then there's the other level is, and what is this art doing in the world? And if it's getting uh, rebroadcast in 500 ways and huge royalties are growing up, then there's a hard, another whole deal. And these assets are accruing to the project, right? So yeah, the project is getting bigger all the time. And it's retaining its uh, and a contribution structure, I'd say, not on an ownership structure quite. But there's this continuing, how did this mm. thing come into being when well, it came into being from this set of inputs and now, look, it's growing in all sorts of ways, and other inputs are being attracted and are being accommodated into the books and in basically whatever way is chosen. That's the key point here. This is not a magic formula, a singular formula. It's, it's an opportunity to write a formula. So let me, let me restate what you said, Michael, to kind of help me make sure I understood it. So that first year where all the contributors who contributed make that asset worth – Ten thousand dollars, and there's sure you know there's another eleventh person that wants to come in and so forth, but the following year that project that this asset is it's it's appreciated. It, it was ten thousand dollars. Now it's fifteen thousand dollars. So this is an additional five thousand dollars. It's intangible. You can't you can't put your your hands on it. But that it's that fifteen that additional five thousand dollars is added to the ledger. So it's in that project art piece has increased by five thousand dollars. So now our estimation through through our estimation, right? And yes. it, it, 
it, it, exactly. You know, how is, how is, so you'd have a curator or someone who would appraise the piece and with the, with the, um, with a expert appraisal, then that, that, uh, that amount would, uh, the, the project would accrue that um, amount based on that expert appraisal. And uh, pick yeah. your experts, you know, and pick your process. It, yes. It's right. Very... So, so that's where the ambiguity and intangibility comes in. It's, it's not, um, uh, it's coming. It's right. always coming. Okay, I think that was a, that was helpful for me. Um, yeah, this this has been a good session, but I need to to uh, move to greener pastures. Um, <laughs> thank you, everyone. I've got a lot of thinking to do, and I, I, I'll be working on some stuff. I see the next step for me is thinking about where that fifteen percent goes and how we determine that that table. Table. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, the problem that I see happening here is I'm not going to be able to convince anyone to do it immediately, right? Um, like, we can use this for ourselves, and we can all agree that this is what we want to do. But, I like, it's going to be an impossible sell to, like, the video art community to get them to use a, a system where they don't retain the value of the work that they're creating. Um, that's why, like, again, like, I think we're making this way too complicated for now. I want to do this. I want to do what you're talking about, Michael. But can we just do this very basic level of something first? To oh, I think so. I, I think that is the point. It's just to do fifteen percent back to the artist. That's yeah, that's right. That's and then people will get hip to this, and then we can start like inviting them into our cult, right? Our open money cult. I'm really into this idea. But we have to, like, you only, three years ago, it was impossible to even sell the idea of additioning your work via the blockchain. You know, never mind redistributing the value and ownership and thinking about value flows and distributed ledgers. That's going to get way too complicated really fast. Just enabling people to hash, upload, authenticate, and then distribute their work and get a royalty from selling it will go a huge distance towards getting people to think about these other possibilities. You know? Well, uh, can I make a couple of quick comments? And I think I've got a split soon. I'm sure others do. Um, this has been a very productive session for me. I'm really, Steve, your summaries were very, very helpful. Yeah, no, um, really. This is the very first time we've actually verbalized these concepts. So. You know, we're in this process of mutually sh shaping ideas. It's very exciting. While you were uh, absent for a few minutes there earlier, Eric, I made the comment that this is a big bunny and wolf problem that exists in so many different sectors of the world and the economy that, you know, um, one bunny cage may, you know, be better than the mousetrap that everybody beats a path to or something like that. We can use many of these in different categories. So I'm very interested in the overall architecture. And I think um, a recursive attitude is, is called for. That is, uh, this is an art object in itself and should be um, treated explored. as such. All right, if that's what we want to decide we want to do, then fine, you know, let's just go with it. Um, I'm just saying in terms of us developing actual tools that artists are going to use right now, what I have on the screen right now is that thing that we can convince other people to use immediately, you know? Um, and I think if, if it's so easy for us to do this right now, I really would hope that we could just do this, get this out as a prototype mm -hmm. and then work on these sort of hashing out these more complex issues of, collective ownership and like how do we do that i think that's ultimately the big prize here it's like oh, right myth. and gary's robots can can run a 15 percent package oh. into a set of accounts like what what we what i need help with understanding is how to put this into rolling uh yeah michael i have one question mm-hmm Contributions to the project come in the form of all sorts of things. Might be all, all sorts of things. How do I transfer uh, the 
the value of the five of us spending up, upwards of uh, two hours in, in video this morning working on these ideas. Well, this is how, one do, I, how do I take 15% of that and transfer it to the existing owners? Is it, is it is the fact that it exists the value transferred to existing owners, or, or do we do we not worry about this rule? The, the, the first thing, guys, is to get comfortable with the idea that maybe no value. And unless you're, you're starting from the possibility that there is no value, that what is considered valuable is considered value because those of us who contributed to it thought we'd done a good job. So between us, the artists, the gallery, the propagators and so on, we got this mix of, we think we've made this worth, oh, at least what we put in, and we think we put in 15,000 or whatever. By mutual self-assessment, I, I submit for acknowledgement, my time has been worth so much over these hours, you know, and Generally speaking, what we've always found in these processes is people's assessments have to be upped. Everybody underestimates their own contribution. And fundamentally, if we can't put together a portfolio of, you know, twenty, thirty thousand dollars worth of people's creative energies and processes and have it be worth ultimately in the big wide world more than that thirty thousand, then we're probably wasting our time. It's not as good as we thought it was. So the first stage is what do we think we've created? And that's by mutual assessment and reassessment of contributions. And, so, and that's the thing, what we're creating is purely economic. Like it's not art right now. Like this isn't art necessarily. And so the thing that we have to, again, be sensitive to the nature of like, what, what are we actually building? Is this for us or is this something that's gonna be for other people, right? And if it's for other people, we have to think about who those people actually are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I think, uh, you know, we were using the example earlier uh, of this commonwealth with multiple people, but I think it, a better example uh, for uh, your, for our application, uh, speaking to you, Eric, is with the one artist instead of, you know, five, it's just one. That artist is an individual and that individual gets that 15% each time their digital video is sold and resold. And that's, you know, that's the simple uh, use case, the simple prototype that we'll work on with the rolling contract as this rolls out for, for that, for that prototype. Yeah, because again, like I just, I've had so much difficult selling this mm -hmm. in, in and of itself, just like making a simple thing, a simple interface that just does that will go a long way of getting people more interested in some of these more complex schemes. Right. And in my next uh, uh, education, self effort and self-education is to start learning Rolang. So I've, you know, gone through all the, the, the videos on the math and stuff like that. So now I'm getting ready to settle in and start uh, working on the Rolang. So uh, do you do we, code, Steve? I haven't touched code in since I was in college. So uh, I'm not a coder, but uh, hey, it, we'll figure it out. <laughs> So what we, we have among us, the, the resources are, are available. Plus, even if your code, Rolang is such a different animal, someone would be uh, having to start fresh. Uh, yeah, really. it's, it's a brand new ball game. It's, it's as different, uh, you know, if a programmer is familiar with Rolang, then they are in a, a elite group of programmers, but, or, or, you know, it, is familiar with that style of programming. It's my opinion. Yeah. I could be wrong, but and in a sense, not there's an advantage to not having done any programming because you're you're you think a certain way. Uh, rolling is so different that we're starting from a clean slate. You don't have all these other other ideas of how you should be doing it interfering. So wow. uh, it's we, completely different than like JavaScript or something like that. It's like. Much, much different. Right. You, the, the way you think as a programmer is different. So if you've never thought as a programmer, you don't have to re worry about training 
rejiggering your, your thinking. So that's, that's the, uh, for instance, we were talking about the raspberry Pi earlier. Ned said, oh, someone had worked on uh, putting Archain on the Raspberry Pi. Well, that individual was Chris Williams. He's here local to the Tampa Bay area. And his comment was, man, this is unlike anything I've done before. I had to totally change the way I think about programming. So he struggled uh, at the wow. very beginning on programming a role lane because it's a different animal. So that's crazy. But, and, and because it's a different animal, this is where the, the, the power and the efficiency comes in. It's a form of a computational calculus and it's, it, it is truly has some ma magic fairy dust uh, along with it. Nice. Yeah. Magic so, fairy dust. Yes. So, what, <laughs> so uh, if you're down, um, what what we can do, you know, we can figure out how, you know, we as far as how the work is allocated, you know, we can do it one or two different ways. I can be the guy who's getting down into the code and trying to tap this stuff out, and you can be, you know, the 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 architect, you know, kind of coming up with the requirements as as far as what it is. And we can have those discussions as far as, okay, it's, it, it, you know, it looks like a dog and it runs like a cat. Okay, I'll program it, runs like a dog, uh, looks like a dog, runs like a cat. And then, you know, see how this works. So that's one way. Or if you're interested in getting down to the code as well, then, you know, you're, you're more, then we can work on uh, both of us getting that familiarity of you write a rolling a line of code you know, what does it mean? You know, what, 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 what are all the, those components and what do they do? So that's another uh, approach to how we can do this. So uh, we, we don't have to make those decisions now, but as we kind of work through it, you know, uh, we, we, we can start to, you know, figure out what, what, what course we want to go. So, and as, as a roadmap, uh, I'm, I'm going to be getting uh, here on CoLab, we have, um, rolling office hours that go back to um, May, August of last year. So what I'll do is I'm sort of gathering a spreadsheet of those videos and we can start to, you know, at the leisure, start watching those and you can, we can, uh, for at least for me, start to get familiar with the, the components uh, on, uh, of, of rolling. And then Jim can certainly help with, you know, we come up with something and you say, you should do this or go that way. But I think uh, the, the one piece, w at least where to start, is the, the requirements. You know, the, just writing down in long form, what is it we want this uh, rolling contract to do? So I saved all of those, uh, the PDF files from, um, uh, th that you had posted in Discord into the blockchain art folder. So you know, each one of those, they're about 60 pages uh, each. Uh, so I'm going to read through those to kind of get uh, the history of what uh, art, art, artist rights and all of that is about. So I have that, that background and then, and then we can, so, and then we can start working on the requirements, gathering and figuring out how we, how do we want to, uh, what our approach and attack will be. So. I think that sounds like a really good place to start is sort of by looking at some of these documents and looking at like what is need what is needed to maintain artists rights um, and then figuring out how to build up the tactical scaffolding Ex from there. Exactly. So that's going to kind of lay give uh, the lay of the land uh, of hey are we just know that we're working within the domain. So we've created the domain that we're working in and then and, and go from there. So uh, I, I'll, so today's a Monday. So hopefully by um, within the week, I'll, I'll be able to, to read through those documents and I'll be more oriented uh, on that. Yeah. I mean, whatever, do what you can do. I mean, it's, it, I just posted them as just like a, a guiding post of like, if anyone had a time to glance through it, it helps the discussion because it yeah. grounds it historically. Exactly. Um, and, um, you know, we, and Lauren is also available if we want to talk to her about how to structure something like a certificate of authenticity or an artist contract. Okay. Um, so like, I'm hoping that once we actually start coding those things, um, she'll be able, I'll be able to get her to come back 
and sort of guide that discussion from her because that that's her area of expertise. Okay. <coughs> um, and then we'll be at them at that point. We'll have some tools that we can actually roll out and trial with people and really see what's what's useful. You know. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, cool guys. Thank you all yeah. so much. Hey, we're making progress. I can feel uh, feel the the forward momentum. Yes. Yes. Good. Good work, everyone. Thank you cool. for letting me listen in. Yes, yeah, Stacy. Oh, is that quite like, an education? <laughs> Listening us to his argue, yeah. Please, well. <laughs> please, please come back often, Stacy. I always enjoy I will. <laughs> chatting with you. Thank you. Great. Thanks, yep. everyone. Yep. Have Thanks. a great day, everyone. Have a good afternoon. Mm -hmm.